Welcome to Live Free. I'm Angela K. Austin. Together, we'll discuss books, we'll explore the world, and we'll do it with some of my closest friends. And hopefully, we'll make new ones along the way. Hey, everybody. I am Angela K. Austin, and today I am here with Sam Griffin. And let me get this right, because you guys know I am not trying to make a mistake here. San Griffin is the CEO of Aggrandize Your Life, and she is the creator of the Black Hair Love Book Series. So you guys know, you watch my channel, you listen to my podcast, you know that I am all about the positivity of uplifting. And when it comes to San is not only, you know, doing this on the indie circuit, but she's also about the support and positivity of, you know, of that black hair love. And look at your girl, come on now. So, you know, so let's get into this. So for those of us who may not be familiar with San, let's kick this off, San, by telling everybody a little bit. First, I forgot to say, say hi to everybody, San. Hello, everyone. Look here, I'm just running my mouth. I forgot to do the basics, my people. But anyway, so now that we have done that, San, tell everybody a little bit about who you are, and then we'll get into the Black Hair Love series, and we'll start to talk about your books, but talk to us a little bit about who is San. Awesome, awesome. I try to, you know, put it in a nutshell, but uh, once again, hello, everyone. My name is San Griffin. I am the CEO of Aggrandize Your Life, which is my first brand which represents empowering yourself with personal and professional development, which um, are courses that I offer on my website. And I came up with the name of Grandize Your Life because I was going through a period where I was actually an island, where I built up walls and didn't want to let anyone in, thinking that was going to keep me safe and this, that, and other. Uh, but I realized that you need people, you need to network, you need to develop yourself personally and professionally, and it has changed my life. And so that's the birth of A Grand Eyes Your Life in 2017. Uh, just last year, 2020, I launched my sub-brand, which is Black Hair Love. And um, But we're going to get back into that. You want to know a little bit about me. I am an educator. I am a neuroscience lover. So I use those concepts in my book and uh, in my business. I am a mother of three sons, a wife, and I'm a serial entrepreneur that loves to encourage others to consider entrepreneurship. So that's what I'm passionate about. Hey, look, I love that. You're talking about entrepreneurship. You know, in my life, I have had many businesses. <laughs> I don't know what that sounds about me. You know, but I, I, I love the idea of, you know, people stepping out and taking a chance on themselves in many, many different ways, you know, and a lot of us, we undervalue ourselves and, you know, we're afraid to take a chance or try something. So I love that, you know, that you have taken those chances on yourself and, you know, and that you offer courses to help people, you know, I really love that. So let's talk. And I really want to talk more about the courses that you have on your website as well. But so be, like, before we get into all of that, Let's talk a little bit more about your, your books and indie, and then we can go into some of the other courses and stuff that you offer as well. Um, tell us a little bit, and let me get this right. Again, you guys, you guys always know your girl got notes over here on the corner. But um, let's talk about your first book, because I was curious when you told me about it, The Superhero's Guide to Dominating Their Universe. Okay, we got that back there. All right, all right. Tell us about this and what it means to you. Yes, it was actually my introduction into this, you know, to the literary world. Um, I wanted to, I knew I always wanted to become an author, but I didn't know what subject, what genre. But I came to a point, like I said, um, when I had built this island for myself, <laughs> you know, that's when I started doing a lot of personal and professional development. Uh, you know, I went through college, have lived, had lived a long time because I was in my 30s around that time and um, and realized that there are so many things that we are not sharing with youth in high school and elementary school. You know, we push them to go to college and then from there to get a job and work for someone else. But we really don't tell them how to manage, you know, their thinking, how to think positive, how to use 
tangible and intangible tools. So that's what this book is about. It talks about using affirmations, uh, the power of you know, thinking big, uh, vision boards. Uh, it talks about the brain, because once again, I am a neuroscience lover. And you know, sometimes like in school, for example, I thought there was something wrong with me because I didn't think like my neighbor. You know, I didn't compute things like they did, but children need to know that they are unique, they're different. There's some people that maximize more of their left brain than their right brain. You know, I've always been creative, you know, I'm not much of a left brain person that's doing the, the mathematical things of that nature. And um, I wanted to create something where you know, hey, you are perfectly fine the way you are created. You know, you have your strengths and you have some things that you can work on and become better at, but you're fine. You're not stupid. So, you know, those are the type of things we heard in my community growing up, oh, you're just stupid. No, you're not stupid, you know? And uh, so that's what this book is about. It talks about left brain, right brain. It talks about uh, learning styles as well as uh, multiple intelligences. And we all have dominant, you know, learning styles and multiple intelligences. Like you could be a spatial learner. I could be a linguistic learner. Or I'm, I may like lectures. You may, may be more visual. So those type of things, I think we should, we should share with you early and then they can excel from there. So that's what this book is about, how to dominate your universe, your mind and where you are. I love that. You, and let me tell you, I tell people all the time, because I've always thought about that over the years of my life. What kind of a learner am I? Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes I might be a little special because, and when I say special, I mean different people. But because I like to learn, or I learn in different ways, different things, yeah. you know, so because sometimes I feel like I'm very tactile, where mm -hmm. I have to do it, because I can read something and I can see it. And I think I know exactly what I need to do. And then I'll go and I'll do it. And I'm like, what, what did I miss? You mm -hmm. know, and so then I'm like, it for me, the way to submit something in this brain is I have to put my hands on it and do it, you yeah. know, because like even in this world of indie publishing and self-publishing, I remember when I first started and my friends would be like, oh, this is what you do to format your ebook. And I was like, what? Huh? And I could not grasp it mm -hmm. until I started to do it. And I was mm -hmm. like, why was that so hard for me to pick up? Or it, <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm a... I, so, so I have, you know, settled upon the fact that I can, like, I am a visual person. I mm -hmm. do need to see it and I do love to read about it, but the way to cement it for me is yeah. I have to do it. If I don't actually do it myself, yeah. I can't have a real good um, conversation about it for me, you yeah. know, cause I don't, I guess I don't fill in all the pieces. So I've just come to realize that for myself, it's like, you can hit me from many different sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just let me do it. Just sit me in front of it and be like, Angela, do this. Yeah. And then I'd be like, got it. Can you think about children that are like that right now? And then teacher just stands in front of the class and lecture. Yeah. And like it's going out one ear and going in, the, you know, coming in one, you're going out the other. Yep. But yep. that teacher was to create some type of engaging project. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, they will retain it more so that's that's the idea of the book yeah and in, in a former job that's what i um i built out a program for high school students and my boss was like you're, you're like it's like you're taking them everywhere and i was like oh i realized i built it for people who were like me i don't want to sit in one spot and just be lectured to because i would i would fall asleep i would be sitting there you would be talking to me and i'd be like Oh, you know, it'd be like, so I learned, you know, and it, it's really funny that you say that we are all different mm -hmm. and we are all unique. And yeah. it's not that you are not intelligent or not capable or not able. It just means that you have to find the way that mm -hmm. works for you so that you can dominate your universe. I love that. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that with us. That's amazing. Oh. It's amazing. <laughs> all right. So now that was book one. How many books do you have out now, Sam? So during the pandemic last year, um, I actually released three. <laughs> three books. Um, I work with a publishing consultant. As you, as, as you mentioned, I'm an indie author. 
And um, it started out as being one book at first, but the more I thought about it, I realized I wanted all ages to be represented and to see themselves in literature, uh, see their unique, beautiful hair, black people's hair, and different shades and tones and textures. You know how we, we're just so, you know, we're not a monolith. And I wanted each child, whether it's a child in the kindergarten or, or a fifth grader or a 11th grader, I wanted them to see themselves, something they can relate to. And so that's why I ended up being three books um, published in June. Uh, during the pandemic. <laughs> so it's Black Hair Love for preschoolers, Black Hair Love, which is the adolescence book, and then it's Black Hair Love for teens and up. And the reason why I put and up, I had I had so many adults read it um, before I published it, and they loved it. They loved it. They saw themselves. They saw their children. They saw some of the um, the memories and rituals we have, you know, sitting in between our mom's legs on Sunday night and she combing her hair, we, ouch, be still. <laughs> Those type of things are in there, so yes. You just struck some memories right there, my lady. Let me tell you what, <laughs> I remember those times. Like I said, um, Sam and I were talking a little bit about my hair texture, guys, and I was telling her, like, I have this super curly, like, 4C hair. And, you know, and I had like a misunderstanding of it for a very, very long time. But um, I remember times when my mom would be working on my hair and my hair, guys, when I get out of the shower, it's just curly and it's just like, you know, whatever. And so I use that, you know, I, of course, like a lot of people with curly hair, you know, we use those Denman brushes, you know, you're trying to get those, you know, comb through and get those tangles out. But, you know, I remember being a kid, my mom would be like, <laughs> I'd be like, and I, I'd be like, oh, you're just tender headed. Be like, no, you're, like, you're ripping my hair. <laughs> it's just like, but I never understood it. And, you know, and my mom would always, you know, try to be gentle because she always thought that I was just tender headed. But yeah. it's literally that thing of understanding starting at the tip of your hair and working your way up through and understanding your curl pattern. And it's so funny. And you have those three books behind you, Sam. Can we see those? Are they behind you? But yes. um, it's so funny that you say that. Especially preschoolers, that's nice. Is that a hardback? This is hardback. Oh, you big time. You got hardbacks. <laughs> this guy here, uh, the lady who dyes my hair. This is her. <laughs> son, wow. Okay. Okay. And uh, this is the middle book. Okay. Adelaide. And this picture here, this mural is actually um, created by Igea Charles out of South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina. Nice. She's two years old and she just draws and I mean, all over South Carolina, all over the United States. And um, she allowed me to put a beautiful artwork inside this book. Fantastic. Some gorgeous pictures. Fantastic. Did she do the art inside of the book? inside of um the middle book yes yeah. all, all of it okay and, um this is the teens and up book black hair love mm -hmm. that handsome fellow there do he look familiar that's my son <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i embarrassed him i put him on the cover <laughs> i love it you know i wanted you to show that one because this conversation with us is so timely because I literally just had a conversation with a friend of mine who is Scottish British and she's a beautiful blonde woman who had no idea uh -huh. about the angst involved, you know, with black hair and the power of your, something like the work that you do with your books, you know, black hair love. Yeah. And we were sitting having a conversation and she was just like, literally her mouth was open and she was like, <laughs> she's like, I, just never knew about this and she's like how did I never know about this and I was just like you're Scottish British you know this is not something that is like hitting you in the face every day when you make the decisions about like when you get up in the morning what are you going to look like when you go to work when you go to a job interview you know or whatever this is not anything that you have to do consciously in your thinking every day. So That's it's okay. like, I really wanted to see what that book looked like because that is an important conversation that so many women like us, you're an educator, 
you know, myself, I came from corporate America. This is a conversation that we have to have with ourselves every day, every day. Beautiful woman. You don't see Beautiful. That. Beautiful, short, tight, cool. Yeah. And, and in a light of beauty. Yes. So I'm intentional about putting males on the cover. Mm -hmm. In my research, I realized that rarely you see a black male on the cover unobscured and in a positive manner you know different shades and definitely brown and black like that so it's not often and in my research for our preschool books there are more books preschool books about animals than black children they're more about caucasians you know they're more um, books that have caucasians on the cover and about them and things of that nature then it's animals under that and then under that is minority um, children. So I was intentional about putting black boys on the cover because they need to see themselves as well. And, uh, and I just love IGL Charles artwork because the name of this is called Black Boy Joy. And they are just, they remind me of the guys I grew up in in the neighborhood, you know, just always laughing and up to just having a good time and not realizing some of the challenges that may be ahead because of the color of their skin or preconceived notions. You know, the innocence, the innocence of youth. Sometimes, look at my hair sticking out now. The innocence of youth, if we it. could pre preserve that in some ways, you yeah. know. And it's like, you know, and it's like, as I was having that conversation with my friend, she literally stopped me and she was like, I'm lost. I'm confused. I don't, I, I don't understand what you're saying right now. And I was just like, well, you know, I don't, I don't even know what to do. You know, I had to stop myself know. and back up. <laughs> Yeah, the other thing I like to say is that these books are window books for other cultures. Mm -hmm. So they can look through the window and mm -hmm. see what we love about ourselves, mm -hmm. what we value, some of our routines, like both of us have the memories of our mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. They can see those, you know, those things in, in my books and, you know, and see why we love our hair um, because it is, what's the word I want to use? It is. Um, prevalence for them to see their story mm -hmm. and their images, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah. commercial, the soap commercial, the, but you know, it's yeah. more prevalent. Mm -hmm. And so that's why she don't have to think, you know, like we have to think uh, when we're going to an interview, Oh, how am I going to wear my hair? Am I going to yep. be judge? Mm -hmm. uh, because when someone else wear braids, it's exotic, you yeah. know, or it's this or that, but if we wear braids, we could be labeled ghetto. If we yeah. wear our we can be labor unprofessional unprofessional and that's one of the things that's what she and I were talking about was you know I told her about some of the court cases where people have literally had to fight in a court of law to wear their hair as you and I do you know I told her about one of the recent cases where a little girl was you know kicked out of school because she had afro puffs on her head you know, and the walkout that another school just recently had because they had instituted new rules at their school for like uniform, you know, and it was it was basically discriminatory against black hair and against, you know, Muslims because, you know, and people who covered their hair, yeah. you know, and so these things in 2021 you know, so if you're looking at this video in 2025, I hope things are not the same. Please. But, you know, in 2021, it is, it is just shameful that we still have people who try to dictate what Black hair should look like. This is my hair. I should be able to do whatever I want to with my hair. If I want to press it out, if I want to wear a wig, if I want to wear braids down to my butt, it is my choice. Yeah. I, I can express myself however I want to. But if I get out of the shower and I just want to dry my hair and walk out the door like this, I should also be comfortable and permitted to do what I want. And it's just so sad that we still have to fight. And I told my friend about a woman who took a um, a customer service job and she took the customer service and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, and if I've gotten this wrong, people please correct me, but she took a customer service job with an organization and it was a phone job. So she would be working in a corporate office in a corporate environment, but 
the the call the her role was a customer care agent over the phone. No customers ever saw her, or whatever, whatever. Yeah. But her boss told her that she had because she had locks, and her boss told her she had to cut her hair. And the woman refused, and she was like, "Why do I need to cut my hair?" And her boss told her she had a customer service job, and she was like, "But I don't ever see people." I only, you know, I work in an office. There's like no reason for me to cut my hair. Right. And her boss fired her. Mm. And, you know, and she ended up having to take it through like the highest courts in her city. And I can't remember the whole story, but eventually she lost her case, you know? And I was like, how is that possible? And this was like 2019 or 2018. So this is a couple of years back. Um, okay. um, because I've been following different, um, legislation and rules and regulations that's coming um, down from the government. And here in the United States, you know, we have, we have the Crown Act, but I just read in the UK, they have the HALO Act. Have you heard of that? I'm not familiar with the HALO Act. What is that? I know about the Crown Act, but what's the HALO Act? It was in my timeline on Twitter and it just passed in the UK and I will send it to you so okay. you can have that. But it's, it's kind of like what the Crown Act is here. It is legislation that is protecting uh, min minorities, especially black people, that wear their cultural styles. They cannot be discriminated against. You can not hire them because of their cultural styles. So the HALO Act is for the UK and the Crown Act is for the United States and different states are adopting it right now. So I, I don't know how many areas have adopted in the UK, but it came up in my feed and I said I was going to write about it in my next blog just to show people how relevant this is, that they have to create, you know, legislation just so that Black women and men would not be discriminated because of their cultural hairstyles. And in researching a hair, Black hair, I found out that our hair is just not hair. In Africa, it represented our tribe, it represented if we were married, it represented all types of things, our religion. So every time that they're telling us we can't wear locks and we can't wear our hair out, you're, you're taking our culture away from us. When no one's taking your culture away from you, you're telling us we can't be who we were naturally created to be. You know, and it's not just our hair, because you know, like you said, that is a cultural thing. Yeah. I mean, you have, like we were saying before, there are so many cultures where people, women cover their hair. Yes. Because like only their husband is meant to see their hair or their faces or what have you, you know? And so, like I said, when I had this conversation with my friend, I was like, part of me was so amazed. I was like, how do, how, is, this, is this not a thing? And, you know, but it's just like, you know, again, like we said, it's not her reality. So it's only because of the fact that she has friends who are not like her, that she's mm -hmm. aware of these things. And that goes to, you know, intersectionality, you mm -hmm. know, because she and I are women, we can have shared experiences. And because of some of the things I go through, I can share that with her and then that can connect her and that can be just another ally on this journey, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I just think it's, it's so amazing when we really do think about it, guys, you know, we don't realize how important it is, you know, the work that you're doing with your book, starting with preschool, and going up to all ages and then having those beautiful pictures inside of your book because you know it's a it's 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 that same thing like we were saying before it's like my hair texture and your hair texture are different you know so like we were talking about this this learning capability you know it's the same thing with our hair we are unique in it yeah. you know so you and i could put the same products on our hair does not mean our hair is going to look the same at right. all. And, you know, and we have to be okay with that and love our own hair. Like Tracy Ellis Ross has a line of hair care products, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things that she does with her hair care products, she has a concept or a theme out there where she's like, I've forgotten how it goes exactly, but it's like something like, because her product is called Pattern, I think. But she always says, love your pattern, right? Or like, look, like, like, this is me, right? you know? And I was telling guys, I was telling Sam, I, I, you know, thank you. I was telling Sam, I was like, girl, I, I like, I love it. I love the way my hair feels. Mm -hmm. I love the way it looks. And right. also, 
I don't know how to do braids and I don't know how to do every other weave and I'm cheap and I don't want to pay anybody else to do it. So you know what your girl is going to do? I'm going to learn how to make my hair as healthy and as beautiful as I can make it so that when I walk out of the house every day, I am loving my crown, you yeah. know, and I'm not walking out like, oh, this is what, I, no, when I walk out the door, it's like you, if you can't see it in my eyes, I'm like, oh, this is this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I love that. <laughs> <It's> in- <laughs> And so I love that you have those beautiful pictures and I love that you put, you know, your son, you know, a young black boy on the cover because we need to have, we need to have these positive affirmations in so many ways, yes. you know, it, it just simply lets us know that whatever we are, you know, it is okay it is us we can express ourselves you know so i love that and i guess i love those images because that's one of the things you know when i was trying to learn about my pattern you know and i was trying to learn how to rock my pattern shout out to tracy ellis ross you know i watched so many videos and i'm like how do i learn and there's so many different things out there you know like and i've forgotten there's like two major hair type scales or um I'll call it a scale, but that's not quite the word I'm looking for. But there's two different hair type scales out there. One where you talk about whether or not your hair is like, um, I think they talk more like the, is your hair like this thin pattern, this thread pattern, this whatever pattern. And so you, you know, you figure it out on that scale or the other scale, which I think is more widely where people are like, is your hair four A, B, C, three A, B, C, you know, and I was sharing with Sam guys, like, I was like, well, my hair is, is um, 4C in the pattern and that it's super spirally, but my hair is not coarse and it's not, um, my hair is very porous. So it's, it's very dry and all these other things. And so I wasn't understanding how to connect those scales with my hair. So I would use some products that were too heavy and my hair would look super greasy and flat on my head. Or I wouldn't put enough product on it and it would look like I would call it dry wheat. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to rock it, you know, and so it's just like being able to have the right resources and tools and things to turn to. So I just think it's it's awesome that you have these and I'm going to focus on that last book because it's relevant to me. Okay. What is the information in that book? What all is that book going to share with us, Sam? Wow. So in this book, um, I don't know if I mentioned that, that it's poetry. Um, there are going to be things that your mother or grandmother uh, wanted to tell you about your hair to inspire you. There are going to be nuggets. There, there are educational nuggets. Because like I said, I did do research uh, as far as locks. I found out the first written uh, documentation of locks were found in India. So, you know, mass media tells us that locks is associated with Jamaica and, you know, weed smoking and Yaman. But actually, locks, people wore locks all over the world. In England, there was a tribe there that had locks centuries ago. India, Africa, just all over. And um, so I I researched that and I put that in a poem. And uh, so there's going to be educational nuggets in here. It's definitely inspiration and empowerment because that's what um, my brand represents. And uh, beautiful images of black and brown people, men and women and children. So uh, I think they will be just thrilled and excited to read and see and feel inspired. And here's the locks. For instance, um, in the preschool book, I also have a, a child with locks because to this day, I don't think I've seen another book, a preschool book with a child with locks. But when I go to the mall and I'm out, I see little boys and girls with locks. So just imagine they don't see themselves represented in the books that they consume. So they can feel some kind of way that something's wrong with them or that they're not valued. So uh, I, I really love my Dreadlock Love uh, poem. That's one of my favorites. 
uh, I have my memories of my grandmother washing my hair. You know, if I come over on a weekend on Friday, my mama had me all week. <laughs> she'd take me to grandma's house and she'd wash my hair and do Bantu knots. I didn't know they were Bantu knots until later, but you know, so I share some of my memories. And you know, of course, you can't talk about black hair without talking about straightening comb, right? <laughs> So, so yeah, so I have, you're going to go down memory lane. Uh, there are going to be some things uh, that people are going to learn about our culture, our routines, and what we love about our hair. Be well, you know, now we said, because this is poetry, mm -hmm. now you know you have to pick one. <laughs> and now you know you have to read it for us. Because this is, this is about to be our spoken word moment, people. We're going to get our strong J on. All right. <laughs> So pick one and share it with us. I would really love to hear one that you like. Okay, uh, I like them all, but let's see which one would I like to share. Hmm. Okay, what it is and what it's not. Maybe I'll read two if I have to. <laughs> okay, so this is why I wanted to read this because, I mean, I want to write this poem because I, mass media was telling you what my hair is, you know. Uh, and I'm, so I, the name of this is what it is and what it's not. So I said, black hair is pretty hair. Girls and guys of color, you are the definition of magnificent beauty. From your round, broad nose, full lips, ancient eyes and thick hips to the unique blend of hairs on your head. Naughty hair, nappy hair, bad hair is dead. We reject those labels that brand is no longer viable. We speak truth and what is pliable. People that don't love your culture started that false narrative. My hair is magnificent is our new declarative. Black hair is pretty hair. Unlearn the false story. Bold warm textures from super tight curls to passive straight strands. It's all in great demand, beaming all over your head, strong and healthy. Healthy is the best form of wealthy. Thank goodness for black hair is beautiful hair. And that's something I would have loved to hear when I was a kid or a teen. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you so, know yeah. what that is. Yeah, you know, because I um, had a conversation with someone and I've worn my hair in all kinds of ways, guys, you know. Like I said, I was natural for a really long while. Then I started perming it. Then I went natural again. And I've been natural now for like 15 years. But um, I think because we've always had a battle with our hair because mm -hmm. of outside or external factors, yeah. you know, that creates an internal kind of battle, you yeah. know? But it's like, but when you're a kid, um, like I was talking with someone earlier. I remember people like if, if you walked out like with your hair like this when I was a kid, they'd be like, "Oh, you got those cuckoo buds, uh -huh. you know." And I'm like, "Buckshots, remember yeah, buckshots? Yeah, buckshots, cuckoo buds, buckshots." <laughs> and it's like now you have people intentionally buying weave that looks like my hair, exactly your hair. You know what I mean? You now have people making money off of making synthetic hair. That looks like this hair, hair that we were told was not acceptable 30 years ago when I was in school. That's right. So, you know, we pressed it and permed it and did whatever to it. And there's nothing wrong with that, guys. Do not misunderstand my words because I still will press my hair. I will not perm it because I'm not into perming right now, but I will still press my hair, yeah. you know. But 30 years ago, we were told that that was the only way for us to be accepted, you know? And so it's like you say, you know, to have work like your work that shows that, and, and I really can't stress how important this is for preschool, but also for people my age, yeah. because you're still in a corporate environment. My friend that I was talking about, you know, as I talk with people and I talk with people in a corporate space, I'm like, and I told her, I was like, that's always a question for me, you know? And that's because of my American upbringing. Yeah, it's yeah. like, when I walk into a space, what will they notice first, you know? Are they gonna be like, oh, look at her hair. And right. you know, you can't not see my hair because I get it big. How big can it get, people? 
<laughs> you know, the bigger it gets, the happier your girl is, yeah. you know, but that's like my thing. Like, you know, you, we always have that internal battle. So I, I mean, I love what you're doing for preschoolers and of course, you know, the older, you know, older kids and stuff. But I love that you have something that carries on in your work and your imagery that speaks to older people, because I think we forget that people my age, people our age, our generation, we were kind of beaten up about our hair, you know? And we need to be reminded that it is okay, you know, to be our, whatever our authentic selves is, it is okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, just this year, I want to say in January, I love Les Brown. Do you know Les Brown, the motivational speaker? I love listening to him. And he was uh, talking somewhere. He said, you know, he was talking about he growing his box back straight up in the air. And he said, he said, black hair is the only air, hair that's aerodynamic. It grows straight up to the sun. He said, that's something to be proud of. That's special. You're unique. And I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> you're right about that because I tell people it's like you know my hair it's like you know I, I, I take my pick because I was talking to my friend you know it's like I was like yeah I take my pick and I just be like mm -hmm. I, re I remember my dad doing it and I, yeah. I you know and I remember my brother doing it too and uh I was just like you know it's just like but I'm like <laughs> my pick because my hair is so curly I'll uh -huh. be picking it I'll be like whoa whoa you know it's like <laughs> We're gonna do a little lifting. We may right. not be able to take that pick all the way through. We're just gonna take it, just lift it from the root a little bit. But it's just so hilarious to me because I do think about being a child and not being as confident, you know. So did you say you had another poem you want to try? You want to play on? Yes, it? But um, you know, when I was a child, I will tell you one of my favorites, and to this day, I will watch a Shirley Temple movie, <laughs> a black and white Shirley Temple. Movie. But, you know, we saw Shirley Temple, Goldilocks, you know, we saw, um, what's the one of the pink, the two pink pills, uh, I can't think um, of um, uh, uh, Pippi Longstocking? Her her. Her. Yeah. You know, we, we didn't see, you know, images of ourselves in big demand like that. So that's, that's another reason. And then, you know, we know our hair, we do like this, it kind of might stay stuck in the air. <laughs> But you know, like you said, kids will pick on us. But now I'm just so glad that we all, all ages are embracing our uniqueness and the beauty that God has put in us. But yes, I can read another one. Maybe I'll read that one about um, hair standing straight up on your head because I, I wrote one about that. <laughs> okay, here it is. Woke up like this is the title. Uh, thinking of Beyonce. Woke up like this. <laughs> when I wake up like this, my hair standing straight up. <laughs> So wake up, your hair standing straight up on top of your head. A constant reminder, it's not dead. A constant reminder, you are a seed. Hair growing straight up to the sun, not a weed. But like gladiolus, tulips and sunflowers. A constant reminder, you didn't come on the Mayflower. A constant reminder, you are unique and you should adore. Every nook and cranny. Why? because you are beautifully and wonderfully made. Tell the naysayers, stop throwing shade. <laughs> so, yeah. I love that. Don't throw shade. Don't throw I shade. love that. Y'all hate love that. that. You're getting ready to go buy our hair. You know you're getting ready to try to buy this hair. <laughs> you know, I mean, honestly, I like. I literally had a weave that was um, a synthetic and natural hair blend that was 4C hair, which is my hair type. Yeah. And I was like, I'm literally buying hair to simulate my real hair because it was longer and I wanted it to be bigger. I had like, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna link it in this video because when your girl was in Brazil, I wanted to have the biggest Afro basketball. Ooh, so I, I bought some hair. Oh, I know it was lovely. And it was big, you know? But it's just like, it's funny to me when I think about it, because I literally bought hair to simulate my own hair texture, you know? And it was so funny because I got so many compliments on that hair. <laughs> People were like, your hair is beautiful. And I'm like, 30 years ago, y'all would have told me to press it. Yeah. And it's just, it's so hilarious to me. And I can only say that for me, that is positive. 
you know, and I hope that it continues to go in that way because for people to be able to express themselves and one of the most natural ways, you know, that gives you, in my opinion, that gives you confidence in so many other things because as a people in general, all people, regardless of your race, there are so many things that we judge ourselves by. Mm-hmm. Hair, of course, because if it's short or if it's long, you know, your, your, your race, your skin tone, your whatever, your height, your weight, we judge ourselves by so many things. Why, why does hair have to be one of those things? You know, why does any of it have to be any of it? But why does hair have to be one of those things? You know, a, one of the most basic parts of ourselves that, like you said, you know, you woke up this way, you know? Oh God, so mine is probably more smashed down. <laughs> It's like I need a little steam to look this way, you know. But still, it's, it's just it's real, you know. That's the next in my next book. I got to talk about the shrinkage. You know, when you wear your hair natural and that water heated or something, or you go out in the sun, that shrinkage is <laughs> so real. Make when I so- wake up in the when I get out of the shower, I'm like, oh yeah, look at all that. Then it's like, boing, you know, <laughs> it's like what in my afro, which is why your girl buys it. So I have a bigger afro. I love that. I love your poetry. Thank you for sharing it with us. Now, before we, you know, you know, because you know, you guys know, I'm always trying to hit a time limit. I never hit it. But you know, I wanted to ask you a few more things, Sam, before we close out. One of those things is why did you choose um, indie publishing, and have you seen any pitfalls? being a self-published or you know an indie published author okay i chose indie publishing because um i kind of want to do things my way <laughs> i like you've been the independence and making the decisions i had my hands in you know creating the uh covers um i don't know if you could see the the hat the halo can you see the crown halo you see it now okay so i chose that because that's what I saw when my son would walk down the hall past me. His hair would grow jagged, like we said, straight up in the air, but jagged like a crown. And, and I, every day I was like, wow, you have a crown oozing through your pores, <laughs> which is one of the poems I wrote. But um, I wanted people around the world to see what I see when I see our black boys, black and brown boys. I see royalty. I see a natural crown oozing out of their pores. God loved them so much. He sh- he's showing them daily that you are royalty. And, um, and so I want to be a part of everything from the cover to the inside, designing the inside, uh, creating the logo, which I have trademarked. Um, I just, I knew that I wanted to have more say so. And I knew my timeline <laughs> because we started working on this um, February. February, I was finished with the, po- um, with the poems. Uh, March, we started. June, I launched my book launch. I, they were ready. So I know that's a very short time span, but um, I also felt um, a divine connection. It was like, it was something I had to do. It was bothering me at night. If I tried to sleep on it and say, wait, or procrastinate, it was bothering me while I was sleeping. It's like, you got to do this. You need to put this out into the world. And um, so that's why I chose that route. And then I had um, a gentleman that was my self-publishing consultant he emailed me right when I was writing the poems and said, hey, when are you going to work on the next project? I was up like, oh, since you asked, I am getting ready to get three quotes. I normally would get three quotes from um, publishing consultants. And I said, you can give me a quote and I'll compare it and I'm going to be ready to start shortly. And uh, so that's how I connected, uh, reconnected with him. Again, he helped me on the first book and uh, we launched all three in June and the teen version became a Amazon best-selling book, and uh, for I want to say for about four weeks, and then I did the I met you at the Black Charleston Black Festival, and Black I, Inc. yeah, mm-hmm. and I realized that week my book was trending again just from being at that event. And someone said, "Hey, do you know your book's on the bestseller again?" I said, "Oh, great!" <laughs> so. Um, but yes, that's, I just wanted more say so. And I knew that my timeline was, may not be realistic for, you know, someone who don't have the vision and the passion that was in me. You know, I think that that's um, because 
all of us, when we first start, you know, we don't really know kind of like what we're jumping into and what all the pieces would take. And you had a consultant helping you yeah. for some of the rest of us. Like I started out with um, small indie publishers and then I learned from them and I was able to jump out on my own. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you kind of put that timeline together and you kind of know, but you know, for me, I think one of the things was when I got into indie publishing, I just didn't know if I had the time to do it all myself, which is why I was kind of with those indie publishing houses. And, and also with distribution, I was just like, oh, how am I going to make all this work? You know, working full time, doing this, that, and the other, you know. So those were things that, you know, proved to be like some concerns for me. And in the early part, they were some of the things I had to like figure out so I could get to where I am now, you know, but like you, I saw a need that wouldn't let me sleep because I write women's fiction and romance and I didn't see enough um, women of color, you know, black women who, in my opinion, were getting like um, the type of romances and the type of love stories that I wanted to see them have, you know, and so I was like, well, I'm just going to write it, <laughs> you know, because, you know, I wanted us to have just a certain, you know, why can't we, you know, I didn't want us to always be seen in certain ways. So I wanted to write those types of books. So I get what you mean about you saw something and it was like on your heart and you had to make it happen, you know, because I think so many of us, that is one of the reasons why we self-published. We want, we saw a need and we were trying to figure out how to feel that need and make it happen. So yeah, that's amazing. Kudos to you for seeing that crown float over your son's head and deciding to take action on it, you know? Kudos, kudos. And it sounds like you did a lot of research now, but have you seen any pitfalls? You know, because like I said, you and I met at Black Ink and people who watch this channel, listen to this podcast, they know that I am big on collaboration. I do not believe that anybody should do anything alone. It's just an unnecessary thing, you know? So, and one of the biggest, like I said, pitfalls I had was, you know, like I said, trying to learn things. And because of the way I learn things, you know, having to have it come at me from multiple directions until I could figure out how to take it on and do it myself. So like, have you seen or, you know, any pitfalls, you know, since you've been on this journey? I would say, uh, Definitely there were pitfalls. Um, I learned to delegate things out. Um, Like you said, not try to take everything on, but have the vision and connect with other talented people (laughs) and, um, and, you know, and use my time wisely to stay in my lane. (laughs) Um, So uh, I learned that, you know, to avoid certain pitfalls, Um, advertising and promoting, you know, as an indie publisher, you're doing all of that. You got to, you know, send those emails out. You have to call, follow up, you know, um, you have to get a press release um, created and all those different things. So just the time, make sure you have the time to do that because guess what? People can't buy your book. They don't know about it. <laughs> it's one of the most basic things that, because a lot of authors, you know, they'll be like, yeah, you know, I'll write this, I'll put it on Amazon, I'll make a million dollars, I'll quit my job the day after, you know, and it's <laughs> really not like that, especially right. if you're, you know, if you're ebook only, or if you're whatever, if you're only on one platform, you know, if you're whatever, I mean, there's just so many things, you know, but so many of us, you know, we don't know it yet, you know, you don't know it until you do it, then you know it, you know, so so yeah, so I, I agree with you, you know, it's just really, you can't, sometimes you have to, you know, learn as you go, Yes. you know, and just keep building, you know, keep building, but collaboration and building that team, so important, guys, so important. Um, so let's, let me look, I'm looking at my cheat sheet, people, you guys know, your girl got a cheat sheet over here. All right. So let's, let's give people the names of those books one more time, including your first book. And then let's talk a little bit about your social media and what you have coming up next, Sam. Okay. Uh, this is the superhero's guide to dominating their universe. And the artwork is by Elaren. He is from Israel, but he lives in Santa Monica, California. And we met 
on Instagram. I meet a lot of my illustrators on Instagram. So any illustrators out there, get on Instagram. We don't know you, you, you have that work if you don't show the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Ajia Charles, she is really huge on Instagram. You all want to look her up. Uh, and she's doing amazing work. The NFL actually just uh, had her to create a mural for, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's on her Instagram page. But uh, this is Black Hair Love, The Adolescence, The Middle Book. Beautiful. All the artwork in here is, who saw that one? This is my concrete poem. I'm so proud of that concrete poem. It should look like someone with hair sticking up on their head. <laughs> but um, that's uh, Igea Charles artwork, some of her artwork. And images that you may not see in books. Um, it's the preschool book, Black Hair Love for Preschoolers. And in designing this cover, you know, researching covers and things like that, they say you want to do things in the Z. So that's what we did, um, uh, creating the covers. But uh, we did a whole uh, uh, homage to my brand colors for Aggrandize Your Life is green and blue. And but uh, in researching colors of preschool books, green and blue were popular colors that really stood out. And so, and then we got the red and black with the maroon and black, which is the Black Hair Love brand colors. So that's a little bit about the cover of this book. And they all can be found on Amazon. Um, I published through Ingram Spark, so you can mass uh, order them like libraries or schools. Uh, my website is www.blackhairlove.info. Uh, you can also order them from there. And then questions i can't remember <laughs> no no no. we're gonna we're gonna um because i want to make sure we get all your social media so um so you can order through amazon and ingram spark you guys have heard me talk about that because i use ingram spark as well for some of my books um but also you can order through your website so let's go through your social media so i hear that you're on ig and i know that because we follow each other but yeah. let's let's give everybody your whole list of social media where all can they find you okay uh, Instagram is one of my favorite places to hang out when I have time. <laughs> so aggrandize your life, which aggrandize means to enlarge your life. A lot of people that, um, you know, don't equate that, but it's A-G-G-R-A-N-D-I-Z-E, your life. That's my Instagram. And uh, the website is aggrandizeyourlife.com, um, which will also link you to my uh, social media. Uh, Black Hair Love has its own um Instagram, which is black, B-L-A-C underscore K love, hair love, black hair love. And there's an underscore between the C and the K. Black hair love on Instagram. And also once you go on that page, um, I have a YouTube channel where I interview Igeo Charles. I interviewed um, Dr. Ebenice, who goes around the country talking about diversity and inclusion in preschool and schools. <clears throat> she's a professor so i interview her she talks about how important how important these books are and um i interviewed uh i have an interview coming up with someone talking about natural hair because a lot of us you know really don't know how to take care of our hair because for so long like you mentioned we were pushed straight into perms <laughs> and uh so i have i'm i'm going to be interviewing um a hairstylist in a couple of weeks um so that's my ig i gave you my website LinkedIn is San Griffin. Twitter is San underscore B E underscore. And Black Hair Love has a Twitter. But if you go on the websites, it'll link you to all of the social media. Yeah. And guys, I'm going to make sure that I have all those links for you in the description for this episode. We'll yeah. make it easy for you. You won't have to worry about that. <laughs> and so before we close out, San, what's next? What's next right now, I am, um, like I said, continue as an indie author, just promoting my books. I have some um, collateral made to go out to schools where I want to do virtual, um, like author day, where they can invite authors into the classroom via Zoom and um, doing different book clubs. Uh, I will, over the summer, I will safely <laughs> wear my mask and do a few book signings. Uh, so you can contact me if you're interested in either of those. I can do it 
virtually or face-to-face, -face, just depending on where you are, and uh, just promoting Black hair love. And I just want to, my goal was to <clears throat> rebrand Black hair. I just felt like there was negative propaganda before my time. You know, there was, and like you said, just for centuries, uh, in my research I found, uh, was it 1619, where they wrote good hair and bad hair. If you was uh, mallow or uh, mulatto, you was considered good hair because you had the, the big wavy hair and long flowy hair. So this good hair, bad hair with black people has been going on for over 400 years. And so I just wanted to do my little part and uh, rebranding and sharing the love, sharing the light. So that's what I will be doing. Well, you know, <laughs> there's something that a lot of people say, um, and I say it too, I've said it upon occasion, it's like, if all of us did that one thing that we love to uplift, you know, and shine, yeah. you know, and, you do yours, you uplift and shine, I do mine, I uplift and shine, the next person does theirs, that eventually all those little circles, mm -hmm. they start to, you know, they start to merge and they start to come together, yeah. you know? So when you say your little part, I think that's monumental because all of those little parts come together and in the end, we end up creating massive change that makes sustainable difference to where we can go from when I was a kid and what do we call it? BDBs, what is it? BDBs, couple BDBs, buds, buckshots, buckshot. the, you know, we, you know, the kitchen, you're gonna need to do your kitchen. We go from that to paying hard earned dollars to buy synthetic hair that looks just like our hair, yeah. <laughs> you know? Think yeah. about that. You know, we go from being chastised and made fun of, mm -hmm. you know, and even now we still lose jobs, but yeah. we go from having to make that choice of being whatever our authentic self is to fitting in with that, with whatever culture we're trying to fit into, you know, to having more choice now, yeah. you know, to be a little bit freer, to accept yeah. ourselves and who, in whatever way we want to. So. I think it's I think it's tremendous. I love that you put it in the form of poetry and the concrete form was amazing. I actually have friends who do concrete poetry and stuff. So I love that. So I love the way you're expressing it. Kudos to you for, like I say, seeing that floaty crown on your son's head and pushing forward with it. Congratulations and welcome to the world of indie publishing. Thank you know. It has been amazing to have this conversation with you. And thank you so much for joining me, San. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Um, thank you to Black Ink once again for connecting me with one other awesome person. Shout out to Savannah Frierson. Yoo-hoo, Savannah. You know, um, thank you, everybody. Everybody out there, YouTube world, podcast land. I hope you enjoyed this conversation yet again. I am Angela K. Austin. This is San. Griffin, check out her work, you know, Black Hair Love, check out my work, check out her YouTube, we'll have all the links for you, um, and come back and join me again, thank you guys.